2015, Nairobi, Kenya. The airwaves were loud and clear. I guess every Kenyan can sing along to this song. To metoka analog to ko digital. To metoka analog to ko digital. That was a hit song sponsored by the government of Kenya to promote the digital migration, which marked the switch from analog to digital broadcasting. The song simply says that we have moved from analog, we are now digital. More than five years later, are we a digital country? 2013, Machakos, Kenya. For the first time, I had the thought, the picture of seeing kids in my village daily walk to school with laptops in their backs. Thanks to a digital team, running a digital campaign, seeking my vote to lead Kenya to become a digital country. That gave birth to the now famous school's laptop project in which every class one child was promised a laptop. Well, more than five years later, are we a digital country? The number of digital projects in Kenya keep growing by the day. And every project comes with a tender. And recently, every tender comes with a scandal. Anyway, are we becoming a digital country? For the past five years, I've had the privilege of interacting with more than 10,000 students through a program called Kids Comp Camp. Kids Comp Camp seeks to reach out to kids with no prior experience on computers and teach them how to use computers, from typing to how to use the internet to how to code. After being in more than 100 rural villages and interacting with all these kids and with their parents, teachers, and their older brothers and sisters, I keep asking myself this question. What would it take for us to have an impactful, sustainable, scalable digital agenda? And especially among children and young people who make more than 70% of our population. 15 years old, Miriam was the best student at kids' comp camp. Miriam broke down when we gave her a geometrical set as a token of appreciation. Later, when we ask her why, this is what she told us. This is all that I've been praying for, a geometrical set to sit for my final exam, which we are coming in a few months. Later, we visited with the family and met Miriam's mom, who is physically challenged, and she's a single mother. She has to use scratches to move around and runs a small business in a nearby market to support the family. By that time, Miriam's mom told us that Miriam and her younger brother had been out of school for two weeks for lack of 200 Kenya shillings, $2. I stepped back and I asked myself, does Miriam need a laptop or does she need a geometrical set? Does Miriam and her younger brother need a laptop or do they need 200 Kenya shillings, $2 for them to stay in school? Athama Primary School is located 500 kilometers away from Nairobi at the border of Tana River and Garissa counties in the northeastern part of Kenya. Kids from Atama Primary School came all the way, 40 kilometers away, to attend a nearby kids' comp camp. When I visited Atama Primary School, I was welcomed by a wide open field with a single block. And when I entered the room, it was just that, a room, an empty room with no desks. I asked Mr. Matano, the head teacher, how many students they had, and he told me 150. That class 
only served class six, seven, and eight. The rest, he pointed to a tree near a river where they learned from. So, when it's raining, no school. When it's windy, no class. I met Muhammad, who was a top student in that school. And Muhammad told me passionately, passionately the way he wants to become a top cardiologist in this country. I stepped back and I asked myself, does Muhammad need a laptop or does Muhammad need a desk? Kids in Oduo Primary School in Moroni Sub County, in Kisumu County, in the western part of Kenya, are known to go to school with no food. To a point, the school is called Oduo No Lunch. I met Felix, a brilliant and engaging young man. And Felix told me the way he walks to school, more than five kilometers every day, across sugarcane plantations, which are really muddy. And uh, especially when it rains, like it did. All this effort to know food. And Felix told me that many a time, he has to miss breakfast for him to be in school by six in the morning. Felix, does he need a laptop? Or does he need a lunchbox? Questions about what priorities we have for children and young people in rural and underserved communities are very dear to me. I was born in a slum in Eldoret, Langas, in the North Rift part of Kenya. And I grew up in a small village, Kaidi, Masi in Machakos, which is in the southeastern. Questions about what priorities we have for children in rural Kenya they are very important to me because I know that they directly impact more than 70% of Kenyans who begin their lives in rural and slum settings. These questions and these concerns are important to me because they remind me the proverb to the effect that we don't inherit our future from our ancestors. No, we borrow it from our children. Therefore, without much ado, and I want us to talk to each other here and answer this question. Does Miriam, Moha, and Felix need devices or do they need basics? Discuss, 20 marks, use diagrams where possible. <laughs> the answer to that question may not be as simple or as obvious as it may seem. It may not be as obvious as it may seem if we begin with ourselves and honestly ask ourselves this question. What is it that we would wish for our very own kids? What is it that we want for our very own kids? What is it that we are working so hard so that our own kids get and make the most out of the current society. I'm so sure every one of us is working the very best, pushing the limits day and night, deal after deal, to ensure that our kids work in the most promising sector, have the best paying job, have the best working condition. Simply put, we want our kids to have the best of the best. Right? And so, the question here is, where are these opportunities? Where are these best of the best? And the answer to that question is, most of these opportunities, they are now in the digital space. They are now in the digital economy. And every one of us needs the best of exposure, the best of skills, the best of a support system, so that they can tap into this first imagine opportunities. And therefore, let me submit to you today that the same way we are thinking the best of the best for our kids, it should not be different when we think about Miriam, Moa, 
and Felix. If anything, they need more help. They need more assistance. They need more attention to overcome double marginalization, which they face daily and risk being left behind, even in this digital age. Kids know when adults are not invested enough in them to help them. Those are not my words. They're words of Michelle Obama in her book, Becoming. Kids know when adults are not invested enough in them to help them. So, how do we ensure that we are well invested in children and young people in rural and underserved communities who are custodians of our future? First, we need a change of perspective. We need a change of attitude. Spoken or unspoken, many a time I see most of us come to serve these kids with a view that they only need basics. And in this case, the basics vary from a geometrical set to a lunchbox to a class. And so all our efforts, all our strategies, all our resources are geared towards giving these kids only that, the basics. The problem I have seen with that view is many a time we attempted to lower the basics. Notice, I did not say standards because we easily forget about any standards whatsoever, simply because we are serving the underserved. We easily lose any ambition, zeal and passion, simply because we are serving underserved. All our quest is geared towards us giving our bare minimum, the, reduce, the reducible minimum. If all we're trying to do is to give the bare minimum ourselves, then not even a selfie to show off is good enough. It is not. Our bare minimum cannot be their basics. Our basics cannot be their bare minimum. In our quest to give, it's good to ask ourselves this question. When we give, do we give what we have or do we give what they need? When we give, is it about ourselves or is it about them? In our mission to create justice and equity, it is important to remind ourselves this important truth, that equity driven by our comfort zone, that is not equity. Equity driven by our mediocrity, that is not equity at all. Equity driven by what we have to do to give equal chances to these underserved young minds, that is equity. The perspective that we ought to have is, yes, these kids, they need the basics, but more importantly, they need equal fighting chances to compete with their peers, to compete with our own kids, to compete with the rest of the world. You see, in this view, the basics become just but conversation starters. The basics become points of contact. The basics become the start of a paragraph, and we don't stop typing until we capture the big picture. And the big picture here is equal fighting opportunities for them. But these are not my kids. I know that's what you're asking. But I'm not the government. But I'm not feeling sufficiently philanthropic to help. But, but, but. But today, let me remind you of the great African proverb. It takes a village to raise a child. Even in this digital age, that is not going away. That is not changing. If anything, it expands. We are now more connected than ever before. We now have more access to information than never before. We now have more technology than ever before. We now have more, more than ever before. 
And therefore, we can do more, more than ever before. As I talk to you, right now, we have almost a million devices in the hands of primary school teachers who are fearful of technology. Majority of whom I have interacted with, one of their biggest headaches, one of their biggest issues, is how to connect a projector. Most of us, we can do that subconsciously. We can step out and help out because we can. One of the most memorable and forgettable experiences has, has been to teach a child that to click is not just to but it's actually to press down a mouse and not the animal. And more importantly, the confidence that these kids get, not just around devices, but holistically in life, to start exploring stuff on their own. It's unforgettable. It's an amazing experience. Most of us, we can do that without even a second thought. We can step out and help out because we can. This year, Miriam and Moha, they are joining university. Over time, their basics have changed. They now need mentors who can empower them to be empowered enough so that they can go back to their community and empower others. We can step out and help out because we can. For us to achieve that impactful, sustainable, scalable digital agenda that we are always tweeting about, posting about, talking about, it's going to take a digital village. And that digital village is you and me. With a changed perspective, with a changed attitude, knowing that even the least of these children and young people in rural and underserved communities need the best of us. We can step out and help out because we can. Thank you.